Jesus is how I can raise up ordinary men, turning them to become supernatural beings, financial persons, making life better, bringing people from the dungeon of sin, bringing them into the faith, planting their feet, and rising them. Pick your Bible while you remain standing, wherever you are in any of the overflows. I want you to get your Bible and pick it up while you remain standing for the reading of the Word of God. Can you lift up your Bible up? Say, so this is my Bible. Please, you have to be vocal. This is my Bible. I am what the Bible says I am. This is the standard of my life. Outside the word of God, I am nobody. I am what the Bible says I am. I believe the word of God. Lift up your Bible like a believer. I believe the word of God. I believe what is written here. This is the secret of champion royal assembly. This is my secret. I honor the word of God than any other word. This is the last verdict to every verdict in my life. Say it well. This is the last verdict to every verdict in my life. And this is the conclusion of my life statement. I am what the Bible say I am. I am not what my enemies conclude me to say. Shout fire. We have some few scriptures to read today that we will take our seat in heavenly places. Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 through 28. Then I'll give you other scripture. Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 through 28. If you are wherever you are, Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 through 28. Mark chapter 1 verse 21 through 28. Now we are going to read the scripture and I want you to listen to what God say. Say, and they went into Capernaum and straight away on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us I know thee who thou art the holy one of God verse 25 and Jesus rebuked him saying hold that peace and come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him and they were all amazed let's read it together and they were all amazed in so much that they were questions among themselves saying what is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit and they do obey him verse 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad through all the region round about Galilee Psalm 34 verse 17 Psalm 34 verse 17 the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and delivered them out of their troubles. Let's scream it with a thunder voice. The righteous cry and the Lord hear it and delivered them out of all their troubles. Obadiah 117, it has only one chapter. Then we read verse 17, then we have our seat. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 let's read chorusly one to go but upon 
Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let's read that verse one more time. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Sit down on your enemy's head. Make sure they are screaming. They will not recover from this prophetic pressure. Somebody shout fire. Somebody say prophetic pressure. Hallelujah. I'm aware that our brothers from Greece have a fellowship center. There are some of our brethren from Greece who are watching us now. They have a fellowship center already formed Champions Royal Assembly. I greet all of you from Greece that are watching me. Don't worry, you will see me one on one. And I pray for you as you stay glued to watch us. I bless you and I declare open doors for you in the name of Jesus. And all of you that have other fellowship centers watching us already, we are having information of people who have chosen not to go to the church because there have been no champion in their area and they are already glued to fellowship centers and they are watching champions television. So we have other overflows everywhere. Give Jesus a clamp of rain. I want to share with us on what I titled Activating Deliverance Provision. Tell me about Activating Deliverance Provision. Open your mouth and shout it well. Activating Deliverance Provision. In all the overflow, all the gallery, everywhere you are, shout it like thunder. Activating Deliverance Provision. Hear this. Deliverance is a covenant provision for the body of Christ. Some school of thought will tell you that once you are born again, you don't need deliverance. I say it's a myopic interpretation of the Bible. Okay. Why do you need healing when you are born again? Deliverance provision is one of the package. When you are born again, why do you need healing? You need healing because your body is afflicted. And that's how it is. You need deliverance even though you are born again. Now, in Psalm 34, verse 17, look at what the Bible says. It said, the righteous cried. The righteous cried. Can you keep that scripture? The righteous, the man that is crying here is not an unbeliever. He's a righteous man. And the Lord hear it and delivered them out of their troubles. The, in fact, the righteous man that is crying, that is here, is not just praying. There is difference between praying and prayer of supplication. Prayer of supplication is an high tension prophetic prayer. It is a level where a man is tired of just talking. He begins to mix mixture of words with cry. Then the Bible says, the man that is asking for deliverance is a righteous man. He's not an unbeliever. Look at verse 19 of Psalm 34. Verse 19 of Psalm 34. Look at this said. He said, many are the affliction of the affliction of unbelievers. Affliction of unbelievers. I thought unbelievers are the ones that have affliction. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the affliction, not of the unbeliever, but of the righteous. So you must understand that deliverance is a righteous man's covenant right. The church is suffering because the church does not understand. 
In verse 17, the righteous man cried out, and the Lord heareth him and delivereth him. In verse 19, many are the afflictions, Psalm 34, of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from all. So you must get this. That deliverance is a covenant provision for the righteous. Obadiah 117. Now, scroll the scripture. They need to follow me because you must get this. And this is why they... Because deliverance ministers don't teach it. That's why we have problem. He said, but upon Mount Zion... Zion is the city of God, the church of God. Anytime you see Zion, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Is Mount Zion the side of the northern, the city of the great God? So it is not in the heritage, it is not in Egypt that there is deliverance, but upon Mount Zion. Now look at it. He said, There shall be deliverance and they say, and shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. Now, hear this. Hol deliverance is the gateway to holiness. Now, hear this. Holiness is the twin brother of deliverance. Uh, you are looking at me? Look at the scripture. There shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. So, any place you see deliverance, holiness appears. If there is no deliverance, there can be no holiness. He didn't say, he said, and holiness. So, they are in touch with. God did not make mistake. He did not bring holiness before deliverance. He brought deliverance before holiness. Some of you are fighting to live an holy life. How can you live an holy life when demons are inside? You cannot live an holy life when demons are inside. When the demon of stealing is inside you, you cannot until you are delivered. That's when you talk about holiness. When I see holiness ministry fighting deliverance, I know why they tie their head, tie their leg, and yet they can keep malice more than any other person. Because they are not delivered. Holiness is not by might, it's by the spirit of God. Holiness is the twin brother of deliverance. Anywhere you see deliverance, you see holiness. You cannot be delivered and still be in sin. Because the power controlling that sin is destroyed. Deliverance is a basic necessity. Deliverance is your covenant right. Deliverance is your scriptural right. Deliverance has been provided in subsection of the word of God. You must apply the covenant law that are there. Ignite them. Activate them for your life. If not, you'll be useless. you go through life struggle. Hmm. Deliverance is the promise of God. Am I communicating? Deliverance is the promise of God. He told the children of Egypt, after 400 years, I will send a deliverance. So it's a promise. Jesus came to set us free. It's a promise. And it has been activated. But we are not applying it. And that's why I came to enforce it. Deliverance is not just for unbelievers. It's for believers. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. And yet you still sleep and eat in a dream. You are born again. You are born again. You wake up. Marks are all over your body. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. You cannot pay your house rent. I'm born again. I am delivered. I am delivered. Your family members are dying one after the other. I'm born again. I'm born again. I am set free. You got the Bible. I don't need deliverance. Look at your age. At the age of 38, you are not married. 
And you say you don't need deliverance. Say, I, I, I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm set free. I am what I am. I thank God that you are what I what you are in Christ Jesus. But you must first be set free before you claim that scripture. You don't stay in the cup of the enemy and braggados. You must be set free. You are 45 years old now, no baby, and you say you don't need deliverance. You are born again. You, are, you scream, I'm born again. I'm born again. Drugs are all over your body. Carton of drugs, you take them every day. And you say something is not wrong. There is this deception. This deception that the devil has brought to the church. That makes us feel that because we are born again, that we should not cry for deliverance. You must understand that deliverance is a basic necessity. Oh, you don't know? Jesus turned to Peter one day. I know I am your master. I am the Alpha and the Omega. He said, but the devil, this desire to have you, even though you are with me, the devil desire to have you. But nevertheless, I am the chief cornerstone. I have prayed for you. Even though Jesus interceded for him, he did not stop him from betraying him three times. So if there was no intercession, <laughs> would have not only betrayed Jesus, would have killed him. If the devil could not be afraid of Peter, so close to Jesus, and enter, he was, you think they are not born again? They were born again. But yet, demon entered Peter to deny Okay, forget about Peter. What about Judas Iscariot, the disciple with appointment? Was he not born again? Why should he sell his master? High level of betrayer. You think it, the Holy Spirit was inside him when he was doing that? No! He became a child of perdition because a demon entered him to kill the Messiah. So, you can be close to the altar and be a co-pastor with your general overseer and yet need a deliverance. In fact, people that are close to the altar are the people that should appear for God for deliverance because you must understand they are the most vulnerable that the enemy wants to attack. You have heard some school of thought say anytime. They keep talking about demon, 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 demon. Who said so that we talked about demons? No. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Talking to us that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Look at what the Bible said. He said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices, of his antics, of his strategies, of his tactics. The devices are his tactics, his manipulations, his strategies, the way he manipulates. The Bible said that we should not be ignorant of it. Because if we are ignorant of it, we are foolish. Boko Haram are busy attacking Nigerian citizens. And Nigerian soldiers are fighting back, isn't it? Yes. It would be stupid of Nigerian soldiers to say that there is no need to know the strategies of Boko Haram. And then they go to the media and say, forget Boko Haram, leave them, they are, they are small people. And they keep operating. And you don't know their, their strategies of operations. You are finished. And that's what many preachers are doing. They, they look down on the devil, which is important, but they don't apply strategy. When you bring down your enemy down, it does not mean you should go to sleep. Know their strategy and defend their strategy. In fact, before you come out and boast, make sure you have put them where they belong to. But most of us have not placed them where they belong to, but we are bragging. How do you declare yourself a winner of a war that you have not won? 
There must be victory before declaration. The Bible says, in all this we are more than a conqueror. It means somebody has conquered and make us more than the conqueror. But here it is, you have not conquered and you are talking about conquering. You are bragging. And that's what many preachers do. They brag. Brag. And yet, the demon of homosexuality has entered the church. Is it the Holy Spirit that will lead another male pastor to desire another male pastor? What do you think is happening to that pastor? A demon is inside. And how do I know that a spiritual wife has entered him? And the woman is desiring a man. But he's in the body of a man. That's what is happening. So the, the, the dimensions in that man, he's feeling that he's a woman. You must be careful. We are in the end. And the devil has manipulated minds. So why are they calling demons? Sometimes I ask, what is your headache if we, if we cast out demons? Hello? Because when we talk about deliverance, we're talking about dealing with demons. Now, what is the headache? A true man of God, what is your headache? When you are, when we cast that demon, what is your own headache? Are you the attorney? Are you the advocate? Is he close to you? Is he your cousin? As by the last time, are you hired to support the motion which says that demons should not be casted out? When I see preachers opening their Bible, preparing scripture to defend demon, I know that in their body there are demon headquarters. I feel like shouting here. Somebody shout fire. fire. Say I believe in deliverance. Believe in deliverance. So deliverance is to rescue from bondage. To rescue from bondage. Deliverance is total freedom from affliction, oppression, and demonic manipulation. Deliverance is total freedom freedom, liberty, from affliction, oppression and demonic manipulation. So, when we say somebody is delivered we mean that that person has been free from the affliction and oppression of the enemy and demonic activities of the enemies. Demons are real. They exist. They exist. Hear this. When Jesus came, and as soon as he died, when he resurrected, do you know the first thing he did? He gave them power. He said, In my name, ye shall cast out devils. The last statement of a man leaving the earth is very important. One of the epistles or the writer, I've forgotten, what? Declared by starting. That the first statement he mentioned that in my name ye shall cast out devils. If a man is saying that in my name you will cast out devil, you should know that that mission statement is essential. One day the sons of God were gathered, came Lucifer in their midst. He appeared and was patrolling to and fro. And God boasted with his son Job. Say, have you considered my son Job? That he ensured evil. And he neglected everything that had to do with worldliness. And the devil spoke to God back. He said, because you have given him everything that pertains to life. Take all these things from him and see. If he will not cause you and die. Him and God bet. That's to show you the extent to which he still had audacity to appear. Before God, not angel. Discussing with God and challenging God. The one my mind pastor is saying is not relevant. There are some pastors that are my mind. That's why something is going. People are dying one after the other in your church, and you are saying, Speak the word. Speak the word with that action. 
What am I doing now? Am I not speaking the word? And after I finish, what will I do? Action will follow. The kingdom of God is not in words. It is in the demonstration of the power of God. Now hear this. Hear this. There are dimensions of deliverance. Some dimensions of deliverance are deliverance where they ask you to go for 50 days fasting. 40 days fasting. You pray and pray and pray and pray. You are almost like a broom. Sometimes you achieve it. And sometimes if there are no corresponding revelation, you don't achieve it. It's, an, it's a deliverance process. Do you hear me? It is what? A deliverance process. It's normal. There's nothing bad about that. There is another kind of deliverance process. And that is the one where group of intercessors agree, gather their hands together. Like the one that happened among when all the twelve disciples gather one demon to cast it out. Fire! Come out! 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 And the demon said, "Wait till they talk. When are they cast? Me? Come out! I know. Come out! They will bind their, they will pull their clothes, pull their suit, and say, fire! Fire! Yeah! 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 Fire! La la! Go they dance makosa with them because their spiritual muzu is not strong enough." This is the problem. The fact that you cannot cast out demon does not mean that the one casting out demon is not original. Oh, you do not get me. Let me show you here. Mark chapter 9 verse 25 to 28. He said, Jesus, when he saw the people came running together, he rebuked the false spirit, said unto him, thou dumb and dead spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. In verse 26. Verse 26 please. He said, And the spirit cried and rent him sour and came out of him and he was as one dead in so much that many said that he was dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. In verse 28. Verse 28. And when he was come into the house, his disciple asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? All of them gather. Both Peter, both Andrew, both John, both Mark, Judas Iscariot, my you the tax collector. All of them lay hand on the bar. They say, come out. The demon say, no, lie. I know they come out. Come out. Say, no, I will not come out. Come out. He say, shut up there. I say, I will not come out. So, after they saw him pass their power, Jesus came and said, oh, ye of little faith. He spoke with audacity and authority and said, come out. And the demon came out. Why? The level of brother Jesus was at the highest pinnacle. He was a, he was more than principalities and power. And at that time, the disciples don't understand audacity, authority, and dynamics. So they could not operate in that frequency. So they said, why could we not cast out the demon? He said, because you eat apple and fufu and pray we go. <laughs> so this can't go ahead not except through fasting and prayer. So that means there are dimensions of deliverance that some pastors will not be able to cast out. And because they are not able to cast it out, he does not make God of deliverance not alive. It is the man that has deficiency, not God. Hello? Hello? There are some deliverance that they will use broom to beat your body and almost kill you. They say fire, 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 fire. They will jar all your body with broom. Ballet 21 major. They will give your body. National flag is on your body. They will flog you. As they are flogging you, your flesh is feeling it, not the spirit. The spirit will be dancing Marcos as they are beating you. Say thank you, thank you. Flog her very, very well. She knows they hear me. Flog her. Flog her. No external pressure on the body can cast out demons. No external pressure.
pressure on the body can cast out demons. What cast out demons is the spiritual authority. Demons are not flesh and blood. They are spiritual entities. And you must take spiritual power to cast them out. Not by physical enforcement. Can I teach you? A woman beat a small girl. Beat her up. Beat her up. And say, confess. Confess. Yeah, he winch. Confess. Then the demon spoke small to her. When it was in the middle of the night, she said they came around. They tie her and tied her hand. They first beat her mouth very, very well. Then they used fire to begin to roast her. Then one of the demons was eating the hand. When she woke up, the hand became very swell up so high. Then the mouth that they hit, she began to have premolar and molar problem. Then her mouth began to burn like this. They say, make churn you there. Now you sabi talk. When woman being they talk, it is said this thing her flesh and blood. She almost died. The hand started decaying until she came to meet me. And I said, you, where did they tell you that casting out demon is by beating somebody? You are beating somebody up. Now hear this. Do you know that the another dimension of deliverance is the kind of deliverance we do here. We don't ask you to go and fast for 40 days. You don't need 40 nights. Jesus has done that. How do you fast for demon? You don't fast for demon. You fast to grow your spiritual life. And you don't get me. You don't fast to cast out demon. That is a, a, Yoruba, a Yoruba way to fight. Emike. 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 As he's putting his shoe, Emike is going back. Emike is going back. Emike. Mark Pilon, Emike is going back. That's a Yoruba way to approach life. You don't need to go and prepare for 30 days. Stand and speak the word in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above all name. Come on. Do you know people are saying that the way we cast out demons is new? That is, some people even say it's from the pit of hell. That is strange. That people who don't, even preachers that we, that I thought they understand the Bible, I discovered that they are just mama, 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 no understanding about the word of God. It's strange to them that you can just touch someone and say, come out. And the demon manifests, identify themselves, and come out. It's strange. Do you know people have said he's a new doctrine that is from the pit of air? That this thing is new. Who told you it's new? There is nothing new under the sun. You did not hear me. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay. Mark, where are we read now? Chapter 1, verse 22. Let's read it. Let me show you here. You, you discover that it's not new. And they were astonished at the doctrine, at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. This is the problem. There are preachers that are as the scribes. They have the word, but they don't have authority. Hear me. Authority is the, the part of enforcement of spoken words. A governor will become a backing dog without the commissioner of police in his state. If a governor said, I want the whole of the airport to be, to be blocked, what makes it happen? The law enforcement agency. They enforce the law. They enforce the spoken word of the governor. This is it. Some, some, some preachers are barking dogs, empty symbols. The spiritual police to enforce what they have spoken out is not there. So they speak and there is no manifestation. 
And this, that's who their scribes are. Because the scribes were teachers of the law. Open the Torahs. They teach the law. They have what I call head knowledge and not spiritual knowledge. There are two things. Information, which is knowledge. Revelation, which is inspiration. And these things are from different frequencies. Verse 23, he said, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. That's when I hear people say, Why are they casting out demons in the church? This one was in, when he has synagogue, is the church. The man was in the church, not in the mosque. The man was in the church, not in which meeting. In the church. In the church. And the unclean spirit cried out. That is how church should be in this end time. Witches should not come and hold meeting in the church. It is an error for us to gather and we are praying. And witches are present to hold meeting. You are praying, Father, give me job. Demons are blocking it because the pastors don't know how to pull down principalities and power. 